the 911 R then? What's the deal with it? Well, there are only 991 of them, so you can't have one unless you snag one at auction nowadays. It's proof that Porsche listens to its customers. This is a car that looks at modern motoring, a world of 0 62 times MPG turbocharging automatic gearboxes and tells them where to go. This is a road car for pure driving. It is an experience. Now the key word here is experience. You see, Porsche's cars are all very quick, but they're also skewered towards the every person, the kind of person that does want something fast, that wants something capable more so than they'll ever be. They want something that looks good, that feels good, and that will impress their mates. But that means there's room in the lineup for something a little more wild. The GT3, GT3 RS and Cayman GT4 are exceptions to that. Cars made for people who want a bit of real world usability, but to dominate on the track. And trust me, those three are proper track weapons. The GT4 is the most usable on the road, mind you, and the most engaging as well. That might have something to do with its gearbox. There he goes, banging on again about manual gearboxes in performance cars. Well, you know what? The manual gearbox was part of what made the Cayman GT4 so chuffing brilliant. Well, that and the engine and the drive and the feel and just the general Cayman GT4-ness of it. But the thing is, in the 911R, it takes that whole engagement thing a little bit further. Here's the numbers part. It's got the GT3 RS's 4-litre engine, so that means 493 brake horsepower, 500 metric horses, and 339 pound-foot. 0 to 62 takes 3.8 seconds, and it'll do around 200 miles an hour, because, well, why the hell not? Unlike the GT3 RS, it wears a narrow body, it has no wings, and it has a six-speed stick shift. The R weighs 70 kilos less than the road-going Rennsport. Now, how's Porsche done this? Well, breathe in, it's a bit of a list. So, the wings and the hood, those are made of carbon fibre. The roof is made of magnesium. The rear windows, they're plastic, which is very lovely. Porsche has taken four and a half kilos of sound deadening stuff out of the GT3 RS, hence all the road grit and noise you get in here. You save a few kilos with a lightweight flywheel, there's carbon discs all the way round. Oh, and if you're a purist or a masochist, you can spec this without aircon or a stereo. It's fast, it's light, and it's a special edition Porsche, which means it's got to be related to something in the firm's past. And guess what? In 1967, there was a car called 911R. The brainchild of Ferdinand Pich, the man who made Porsche's race cars so damn good, it was designed to take on GT racing. So what old Ferdy did was he took a 911, kept its steel body, but then removed everything that could be removed. So the wings, the hood, the roof, glass fibre. The windows became plastic. Anything that could be taken out for weight saving purposes was. The resulting car weighed just 800 kilos or nothing. It was given lighter, wider wheels, a taco that went up to 10,000, a fancy Monza steering wheel and an engine bred from racing, a 210 horse six pot from a 906 race car. The idea was simple, make and sell 500 lightweight specials, enter them for GT racing, win all the things and go home on a pile of gold. Sadly, the bean counters got in the way and said no one would buy them, so only 20 were made. It was the 2.7 litre RS before the 2.7 litre RS existed. It really is the prototype for the GT3s and the like we have today, and of course, for this. And that's why you can get a white 911R with red stripes, lineage, heritage, the typical Porsche way. But now's the fun bit. What's she like to drive? I've been waiting to drive this thing for so long. Various things have got in its and my way, but finally we are united. So the steering's been tuned, the suspension's been tuned, it's got a manual gearbox and sport mode does a blippy downshift for you. That's the, the toys bit done. What's it like? Well, in the wet, she's a bit of a demon. <laughs> this feels supreme. It feels fantastic because you get a proper 911 howl again. We got that engine from the GT3 RS. I've driven a fair few 911s and none of them have sounded quite as good. This thing revs to 9,000-ish RPM. It just sings and it's glorious and because this has less sound deadening than the GT3 RS, it sounds so good and yeah you can hear mechanical clatters and clanks and stone chips bouncing off the wheel arches but pop it into second, find a straight bit of road, 
hope to God there's not anyone in the way, and boot it. Oh, yes! <laughs> and the manual gearbox, it's not the seven speed you get in a normal 911, oh no. This is a proper six speed box. Pedals are easy to get around, easy to use, easy to play with and toy with. You can control this car so beautifully. And if it starts to slide a little bit, you can control it with the throttle because there's so much finesse, so much of a beautiful response in there. This car is just something else. The star of this thing is just the way it feels, the way it dances, it's steering. You feel it through your arms and your hands. This thing changes direction supremely. It's so light. I'm overwhelmed by this. They wanted this to be the road version of the GT3 RS, and that is exactly what it is. It plays with you more. It's so much more communicative. It feels less threatening, even though it probably isn't, because it hasn't got a big downforcey wing. And this is a 200 mile an hour car, near as damn it. The gearbox is so engaging. No, it's not as quick as a PDK, but who gives a shit? You can actually drive it and feel involved in the process again. That is the one downfall of the GT3 RS. The gearbox is fantastic and it's designed to get you round a circuit as quickly as humanly possible. Whereas this isn't about lap times. This is about joy and experience. And oh my God, what an experience. And the next generation GT3 will have 500 horsepower, but it'll also have a manual gearbox. Porsche listened. People bought these so quickly. And now they're selling a manual GT3. We thought those days were gone. I've driven so many 911s, so many. And they've all been very special. But this is by far the best. It's the perfect 911! Make them like this! No matter how good the 911R is, and it is that good, I still have a problem with it. It's not the sheer assault on the senses it causes. It's the fact that there are so few of them, and it's a problem that the performance car world really needs to stop. It's a point that auto car journalist Matt Pryor brought up in his column a while ago. Why are manufacturers creating so few of these cars only to squirrel them away to a chosen few? I mean, I do get that it adds exclusivity to the brand, but when there are so many people that want cars like this, why do they only go to preferred customers? And why do they only make them in such small numbers? People clearly want them, so why make so few? How many of these are going to end up hidden in air-conditioned garages, away from the world because they're a sound investment? This is a car that Porsche designed for driving, to enjoy on the road. That's why it's so tactile, so noisy, so engaging. It's why its tyres aren't full-fat GT3 RS width. It's not meant to be a garage queen, but a B-road hero. It's irksome that the 911R is so limited, so hard to get hold of, so hidden away from people that really, really want them. But the good thing is, Porsche realises that people want cars like this. And having driven this particular one, I can see why they do.